Hi guys, Andy here. For this episode of New Leaf Harvest, we're going to highlight the epic garden snail. If you've ever played the game, you know it's one of the easier bugs to catch, and it's the same way in real life. They come out when it rains, and in the game, they're usually found on bushes. In real life, you can find them pretty much anywhere in your garden or wherever it's moist and shady. Now, Blathers in the game has this to say about snails. Snails are mollusks that live on land and are related to shellfish, like clams and oysters. One snail can play the role of both a male and a female, so it can lay eggs all by itself. Newly hatched snails already have a tiny shell, so right from birth they're easily identified. Most species have clockwise spirals on their shells, though spirals that go counterclockwise are possible. Now what's really interesting about the snails is that whole they're both male and female part. Because they are, but they do need another snail to actually mate. When they do mate, they'll circle each other for a while before they actually do the mating ritual. Now what's really interesting is part of that mating ritual is that they try to exchange something called a love dart. And some people say, oh, the love dart is what inspired Cupid's arrow. I somehow doubt that. They used to think that maybe it was some sort of stimulation, so it'd be like, hey, you want to get it on? Oh, sure. <clears throat> ah, it feels so good. Yeah, no. I, I, no. They used to think that perhaps maybe it was a gift of calcium, like the stuff their shell is made out of. So it'd be like, hey, you want to get it on? Sure. <clears throat> For you. Why would you do that? So the real purpose of the love of dark turns out not to be some sort of gift or stimulation, but it's actually the mucus on the dart that opens up the organ of the other snail to receive the sperm better, so that snail has a greater chance of being a father. So love them or hate them, you have to admit, there are some very interesting aspects about them. Now if you're a gardener, you probably hate them, because they'll just eat really anything that's green in your garden. And there's a lot of ways you can kill them. There's poisons and uh, diatoma diatomaceous earth, diatomaceous <laughs> earth, or one of the meanest ways is probably to salt them. Any schoolboy who's tried that knows what happens is they'll just sit there and start bubbling and foaming. What's going on is osmosis. Since they're mostly water and very wet, and that's the environment they need to be in, whenever you place salt on them, it's drawing all the water that's inside them out through their kind of mucusy skin. And that's why it'll bubble is because it's going, they're trying to slime it as much as possible so hopefully they can get away from it in time. But if you use enough salt, they'll essentially just dehydrate really, really fast. That's kind of mean. So if you're French or like certain food delicacies, you can also eat the snail. That's known as escargot, of course. And if you're raising snails, that's called haleciculture or haleciculture. Not sure. So how the snails are prepared is once they're a big enough size, they are purged, killed, and removed from their shells, and usually cooked with garlic butter or chicken stock or wine, and then placed back into the shells with butter and sauce for serving. Mmm, tasty! <laughs> Thanks again for joining me on this video. If you want to keep getting these as they come out, hit the subscribe button. And if you know others would like to see these kind of curious little things as they come out, Either subscribe or hit the like button, because that'll go far to spreading it around. Thanks so much, and remember, play life.